In this video, I'm going to show you how to rapidly get started using MicrobeJ. You'll find the MicrobeJ plugin is located in the Image Plugins menu. To orient you to the layout of MicrobeJ, first you'll notice that MicrobeJ has several tabs along the top, which allow you to set up an experiment, load your image, define parameters for cell detection and analysis, detect fluorescent foci associated with bacterial cells, use templates which speed up analyzing image sets, and finally track any errors that might arise during analysis. In this video, we will explore the features in the Experiment, Images, and Bacteria tabs by starting with this stack of phase contrast images and show you how to optimize detecting cells, extract simple information like length and width, perform simple statistical analysis, and graphically represent your data. On the Experiment tab, you can specify a name and a description for your experiment, but it's not mandatory. We currently have a stack of phase contrast images open on the desktop. To select this stack of images in MicrobeJ, go to the Image tab and select Image as the input mode. There are a lot of other ways to open and select images in MicrobeJ, but we'll explore those later. Now go to the Bacteria tab. In this panel, we will select the channel of interest. In our example, we only have one channel. Next, we will select the type of background. In this case, the background is brighter than the particles of interest, so let's keep the bright mode. Finally, we will select the automatic thresholding method. Most of the time you can select default as the automatic thresholding method, but there are times when you might need to select a more appropriate method. If you're interested in any of these other thresholding methods listed in the drop-down menu, please take a look at the documentation available on our website. You'll find everything you need there to properly use those methods. Note that you can display or hide thresholded values on the image by clicking on this button. Now we will move down to the morphology detection panel and select a mode of detection. You can see that there are several choices, but for this example, we will use the medial axis mode and click on the test button. When you click on the test button, the particles will be detected on the active slice of your image stack using the current settings. If we test our settings on slice 5 of our image stack, we will notice that not every particle detected will be a bacterial cell. So you might ask, how do I know what settings to change to optimize detecting only the particles of interest that are cells? If you zoom in on your image, you'll see that for every detected particle, you have access to their specific attributes such as their area, width, or length. You can use the information to help you easily define what particles to include in your analysis. So if you want to exclude this tiny particle, for instance, from the final analysis, just adjust the minimal area to something greater than 0.4 and less than 1, and click on the test button again. As you can see, the particle is turned red, and this means that it is now rejected from the final analysis. Using this same procedure, you can refine the rejection process by using other attributes, such as the width or length, but also more complex attributes, such as the angularity or sinuosity. If you want more details about those different attributes, please take a look at the documentation available on our website. When you're done optimizing cell detection, you can now select different options to analyze your cells. For example, if you are interested by the length, the width, or any shape attribute, select Shape Descriptors and all the attributes will be listed in the raw data table. Another option that's very useful is segmentation, which can be used to separate cells that are touching each other. Let's select that option now and go to the first slice in our stack of images and press Test. You can now see that the two cells that were initially rejected from our analysis have now been segmented and will be included in our final analysis. Other interesting options that MicrobeJ offers are septum detection to detect septa along the medial axis of the cell, or profile when you want to extract the intensity profile along the medial axis of a cell, or to simply get the image of the cell. But we'll talk about those options later. Up until now, we've only tested our settings on a single slice of our stack of images, but I'd like to point out that some of the buttons in MicrobeJ have a dual role that is indicated by this shaded lower right corner on the button. This means you can access an additional, related function through the same button. On the Test button, for instance, if I use the scroll wheel on my mouse or two-finger scroll feature on the trackpad, you can change the Test button to test all the slices in the stack, not just the active slice. Now when we move through the stack of images, we see that all cells have been detected. If you will be analyzing images of similar types of bacteria in the future, it might be useful to reuse these settings. To do that, you want to save these settings into a file. At any time, you can save these settings as an XML file by clicking on the Save As button. You can also load existing settings by clicking on the Open button or simply drag and drop the file on the MicrobeJ status bar. 
Note that you can also drag and drop images, templates, experiments, and result files here. Okay, now that we've defined and tested our settings and saved them to use for a future image analysis, it's time to run the analysis on the stack of images and obtain the raw data. When you click here, you'll be presented with MicrobeJ's results interface. The results interface combines all the information about the experiment and the bacteria that MicrobeJ has detected. To get access to any information associated with the bacteria, just click on bacteria here on the left panel, and you will see all the bacteria detected in that image on the right panel. Each row is an individual bacterium detected in the image and is directly linked to the image. So if you click on one row, it will highlight the corresponding bacteria detected on the image, and likewise, if you select a bacterium on the image, it will highlight the corresponding row of the list. This makes it easy to interact with your data set to temporarily exclude, include, or completely remove bacteria from the list, and ultimately from the final analysis. By default, to simplify the display, you only see a limited number of columns in the list, but each of these columns contains a collection of features associated with the column name. For instance, in our example, we checked the shape descriptor option when we set up the experiment. You will see a column called shape. By right mouse button clicking or holding down the control button and clicking on the column title, this displays a submenu with the available features such as area, length, width, and other shape attributes. By clicking on one of these, it adds a new column to the table with the corresponding feature. However, you can also hide a column in the same manner by right-clicking on the column and use the Hide Column function. Once you've revealed the data that you want to analyze further, you have several options. At any time, you can right-mouse click or control-click anywhere on the list and copy the active data set to the clipboard to paste it into your favorite statistics or graphing software tool or save it as a file. But I'll have to admit that one of the most powerful features of MicrobeJ is that you don't have to leave the MicrobeJ working environment to run statistical analysis or graphically represent your data. MicrobeJ has you covered. This functionality is built in. In this Getting Started with MicrobeJ video, I'm only going to give you a glimpse of what the results interface has to offer because it can do so many things that you would normally require several dedicated software packages to achieve that it really deserves a video of its own to explore them in more depth. So let's just do a few simple things like calculate the mean of the cell lengths for all the bacteria you detected in your stack of images, and then plot a histogram of the distribution of the lengths. You will see that the results interface is very easy to use and highly customizable. To get the average length of your bacteria in the population, you can go to the Statistics button, select Mean, and select the feature that you want to display. In our experiment, this would be the shape attribute length, and press Play, and you get access to the value directly in the table. You can pop the statistics result out into a separate window using the pop out to window button. Likewise, if you are interested by a graphical representation of your raw data, you can go to the charts button located above the raw data table, select histogram, select the shape length column, and press play. If you want to try graphing your results different ways and altering the appearance without losing each one, you can generate different charts de novo in the chart generator. When you get the one you like and would like to use it again in the future, you can save this as a template. Each of the pop-out windows becomes a template that can be saved and listed on the results interface at the bottom left panel. So in this video, you should have learned how easily it is to use MicrobeJ to load images, optimize the detection of bacteria in those images, get your raw data, and perform analyses and graph them. Thanks for your interest in the MicrobeJ project. Stay tuned for more.